Tech and Monkey Logic Podcast. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out episode 6 of the Tech and Monkey Logic Podcast. Uh, I'm Dr. Otaku, with me as always is Space Logic. Uh, we do have a special co-host today uh, with us as Deep Surface. Uh, we'll tag his account in the description. Uh, another great friend of the channel. And then we have two special guests that we've been looking forward to for, honestly, since before New Year's. I was uh, trying to get these guys on, so I'm glad we were able to find some time. Uh, we have Hacks and Vendor World together uh, here to talk about some of their work, music, visuals, um, and everything in between. Some tech stuff, too. So, yeah, welcome to podcast number six for the Tekka Monkey Logic. And... Uh, I wanted to really welcome Hacks and Underworld. We've been uh, really wanting to do this for a while. Big fan of your work, big fan. You guys, I mean, in my opinion, you guys really are reigning on the forum. You've got your real, real tight timings. I mean, uh, look at the videos and the frames i could literally tell you've got a good handle on it and the artistic way you guys are using it is just really great so deep you want to start off i'm going to give you the space to do it oh to start off uh well the i'm really kind of clueless about their side of it you know like uh with the because you're doing this real time right I, i've got to see one of your twitch things where you were drawing and uh, you were doing the music and stuff but I, I couldn't find a whole lot of the live stuff but like how does that work with the uh if you could like for people who don't know much about that live performance of it uh how how exactly like what kind of time is involved the lag or you know pre-planning all your movements and stuff yeah well we've you want to you want to talk about the twitch stream or yeah i'm sorry to jump in heavy right away no 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 not at all not at all yeah with the twitch stream stuff i don't we've only done deform a couple times on twitch um and just streaming in general i think the last time we were doing it we're testing uh beat syncing motion parameters so wasn't anything too crazy we just threw the motion params in i I chopped up some old motion parameters that I had and like intertwined it with the beat sync so that it had some more flow. You know, I don't, I don't like, I don't like things that be like, you know, perfect like this. You can, you can tell when, when something's made with a formula cause it looks formulaic. I like that random chaos in it. So, you know, adding a little bit of that to those, those formulas, but, you know, we don't do a lot of like live stuff yet per se. I think that's something that's definitely on the docket for for Hacks and I. You know, as we start to consider doing uh, live music shows and like trying to VJ these, um, I know that there's you know a plugin for Touch Designer with um, Stream Fusion, uh, something that we haven't really looked into yet. But like, I, I totally think in the next like 12 months, you're going to start seeing people being able to create live visuals with AI uh, and VJing with music. And like, we want to be on the forefront of that for sure. So whatever that looks like, we'll keep you all in the loop. Nice. Well, that's, uh, it's ma that's mainly hardware limitations though, right? At this point, not so totally. much. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally hardware limitations. Yeah, I think the uh, on the graphic side of uh, the PCs, uh, the teraflop is coming out, you know, with the memory, because they're now focusing specifically for AI generation on the tech. Because whatever we have up to now, it's just doing it. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure everybody's got the NVIDIAs for their setups, because that's the only GPU that can even handle any of the deformed stuff. Just just set my forty ninety up. <laughs> Ran first time. <laughs> yeah, Wasn't like without a computer. I was, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy install, but man, that thing's beast, dude. Oh no, it it was like is. four or five times the size of my thirty sixty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. In line about that, I mean, 
they're they're they've substantially gotten bigger substantially gotten bigger but yeah i mean for people who are not familiar with the forum uh we'll post some links for deform art it's one of the biggest growing i would say te technology for creating generative but it is a very raw you know software like you really it's 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 pretty artistic if you think about it because it's it's a pure creative tool and it depends on the person behind it using it how they use it so it's very very customizable and i think whoever uses the forum is straight up an artist because it's not an easy thing to use so hey. yeah it's very demanding very time intensive i think one thing is a lot of people maybe see the videos that we've produced um and you see a two minute video you scroll past it you think great that was cool you, you maybe don't realize you know the weeks or months of work that went into it behind it and it's not just the week of work creating that one single video but it's all the weeks of work of testing failing making other videos and other styles learning from those parameters so there's really um i think a lot of deep knowledge that goes into it it's, it's not as simple as just prompting setting some motion params clicking a button and then out comes uh, a masterpiece yeah. Uh, the forum is nothing, and this is nothing against Kyber or, uh, you know, any of the other, because uh, Kyber uses stable diffusions. Yeah, mm -hmm. plug and plays. Yeah, they're not just going to make your uh, absence, you know, mask in just like that, just mm -hmm. by click a button and all that. So, no, it's, yeah. It's, the diff it's like using, like, in Microsoft Paint versus getting into Adobe. <laughs> You know, mm. like that is a that is a very <laughs> good example there. Very good example. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, here, I'm going to share my screen really quick because I just wanted to kind of shift the conversation a little bit related to what you guys are putting out on uh, Twitter. So let me pull this up. So this isn't the exact first picture I saw from you guys, <laughs> but it, this is a very similar style of what I was seeing. Um, online that made me want to like reach out to you because as soon as i saw i can't find the exact one but i saw one of these for the first time i think it might have been this one honestly and i lost my shit i, I messaged saint immediately <laughs> reached out to you on twitter and all that um just because i was like man these, this guy's like he's like in our headspace like this is the kind of because i don't really do this type of like heavy duty stuff on my channel it tends to be a little bit more light and calm but that doesn't mean i don't love this stuff like i super duper love it but as I've been researching you guys and kind of keeping up with you on the socials, I've noticed that you guys are running like um, like auctions and stuff and that there might be like NFTs attached to it. Did you want to go into that a little bit and kind of explain like that business model? How's that going for you? I'm, I'm just kind of really curious about all that. So yeah, I can, I can v, definitely wanna, jump in here and start it. I mean, yeah, you want to tell, maybe talk about the separation. Yeah, and I don't know too. if end of 2021 or beginning of 2021, you got me all riled up on NFTs. You, mm. you got me locked into the PFP culture and I was like, oh, this is interesting. You know, I'll try to follow along. I had no, I had no idea. You know, I was, I was selling software. <laughs> Just like, you know, I, I was always an artist masquerading as a different profession and like, you know, seeing people actually being able to make money like minting work and selling in like it was it was all pfp stuff and and i was starting to follow some one of one artists in the space through ghost club um and like april 2022 hacks had quit his job and and i was just i was over my job for sure at that point and i said it let's let's take the plunge and hacks had like i think in like two or three days he, he made this whole generative pixel project, like crypto punk style. He's like, yeah, this, you know, we're creating the underworld. I need you to make one of ones for this. Uh, you need to make pixel art. <laughs> I was like, you know, I've been spending my whole life drawing. And I was like, okay, last time I did pixel art was with, with kid pics in 1995 on a Macintosh LS. So <laughs> I think I got this. Uh, I spent like the next two months making 
pixel art and it was sick and you know hacks had put together an entire contract we had a minting page on our website um we we decided to go stealth mint don't tell anyone we exist but then we fell subject to the free mint meta at the time and um we put it out there and like it minted out like almost within 30 minutes of us posting about it or or getting the first mint and we're like oh this is cool like maybe we can make money off of this next time and, and not make it a free mint and then we proceeded to do like free mints for the next year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you got to, you know, grow your name somehow. But things really kind of like changed when AI came out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't think any of us were expecting it. I remember mm -hmm. learning about GAN and AI in like 2014 when it was like, it was all just like cats in like a weird DMT kind of like trippy celestial DMT creature made of cat faces. And like AI has exponentially gotten insane. And like mid journey came out. I was like, Oh, this is kind of cool. And I kind of wrote it off and then stable diffusion came out. And like, I, yeah. I remember the first week stable diffusion came out and I got a uh, dream studio which was, I think, their platform for it. And I was like, holy shit, this is the future. Like, Stable Diffusion, like, they weren't really censoring shit either. Mm -hmm. and, like, mid-journey, all big. my prompts were getting super censored, which, mm -hmm. you know, made sense <laughs> um, <laughs> at the time. But, like, you know, looking on it, like, yeah, Stable Diffusion just paved the way for creativity. Like, I've never experienced something as as creatively um expressive as being able to just get in there and like have full control over creating some gnarly ass shit and so you know i i think we we released some stuff in october 2022 some ai stuff and like dude we had no following we didn't know mm -hmm. the I, I mean i come from a marketing sales background and i didn't want to do any of that i just wanted to create art and and like make music with hacks and like have fun and figuring out how to do that was so important for understanding the business side of it later right like you have to get grounded in your creative expression before you can go out and start trying to make money on it if you're not grounded in that shit you're just not going to figure it out no that that dude that is excellent i mean the way you explained that that was pretty Dope. And I mean, with, yeah, the AI just kind of like uh, <laughs> swooped in and uh, yeah, it took me by surprise. My first experience pretty much was Kyber. And I was, my, when I saw it, I wanted to make animation. Literally. I wasn't uh, into the music and, you know, the, just the flow. I, I, I wanted to see if I can make animation because that was my thing. And here I am using Kyber and I, I made animation. I made a lot of Lovecraft animation. I made aliens animation out of that, which blew the mods. It, I mean, I was in their Discord. And I would post it, and they would message me. They're like, how did you do that? I said, man, I said, your interface sucks. But uh, <laughs> I had to improvise and, you know, like, just come up with out-of-the-box ideas to do something, you know, with what I had. I mean, it's a blind prompt role, basically totally is um yeah as we were talking about before starting this like i remember when replicate had their first deform module and like running those first test deforms and like hacks made some crazy shit and i was like dude i gotta make shit like that and like that being inspired by just seeing someone else creating this shit and knowing that like wow what's the next iteration of this tool going to look like and then preparing yourself to be ready for that next iteration. So like I, I bought my first PC, like then and there on the spot in October, I was like, I need to run this shit locally. I can't be yeah. paying for it on replicate per, per roll of the dice. Like this is an investment I need to make. Um, and yeah, once it came out on auto 1111, like it was oh, off yeah. to the races, dude, you know, knowing that you got free rolls all the time, 
you don't have to worry about paying on replicate and then you get more you know the 3d motion parameters weren't even out you can only do 2d motion parameters and it took me like four months to get the 3d motion parameters to even work let's <laughs> wait um, so real quick, so real quick, go ahead go ahead um so you're saying you didn't even know much about like computers and stuff prior to jumping into all dude of i grew up on macintosh computers i i played playstation my whole life i'd like never had a need for a pc computer i wow. i didn't even own a laptop for like the last 10 years like i always wow. just used a work laptop like i just dang man. you know that's crazy. well i'm just i'm super shocked by that you know because like i know how hard it is to to like you know we're talking about using the form natively but you know i hope i'm like my family it guy i help everybody get their computer set up fix their stuff like i know it's hard for people to like just get into the flow of using a, a freaking computer again let alone mm -hmm. all of that that you're doing so that's pretty impressive man like kudos to you because that's a lot to overcome a lot of learning curve <laughs> it, it definitely took me a month to like set up automatic 1111 i definitely yeah. probably sent a lot of error messages the hacks to like well, decode this the decode previous... that but actually chat gpt dude yeah, the previous six yeah, months yeah, yeah. leading up to that, you were still on your iPad. And we were yeah, trying I, was, to, we were I didn't to even have a computer. Stuff. I was only on we the were, iPad. Grizzly or Underworld is asking me, like, can I can I mint? Like, is there a MetaMask <laughs> app? Like, how am I? How do? How does this work? It's like, dude, you just got to get a PC. Like, That's there's no easy way around that. It was pretty brutal for sure. Yeah, no, and you guys um, were posting about that that local Dolly stuff, like the wizard uncensored kind of stuff, 13 billion mm. model parameter. Mm -hmm. I've been, I set that up as well, uh, nice. following a little bit of your guys' tweets and then also some chat GPT to help me with my error codes. Um, and yeah, it's been running um, natively for the last week on my end. But, so thanks for that tip. Nice, nice. That's a ton no. of fun. I know I'm not the only one, but how does it, somebody even start to monetize with the NFTs like digital art? How does... Like, like even in the beginning, how did it even become a thing that is, you know, was a market? Or how, yeah, how did you it, guys do it. It it really took a lot of time and like patience and failure and frustration and posting and minting shit and having no one show up. That's the part um, no one wants to hear. Nobody talks about the <laughs> yeah. The no one, no one talks about that posting shit. into the void. It's really just shouting into the void for for months on end. And then so, and like, that. yeah, you got to just believe in the work. And like, we knew that we were kind of ahead of the curve with stable diffusion shit. And like having that differentiator, especially when I remember we released, I worked on this project called Warlords, where we, we showcased a bunch of stable diffusion, like techniques and different like diffuser different, yeah, methods different used models. and like what does the cfg scale at six for seven look like and it was a collection of 999 um and so we minted another huge collection and like one of one artists weren't doing that at the time mm -hmm. and like we showcased a bunch of shit and like no one cared right because no one was using stable and that was the month that mid journey v4 came out and we got super into realism and like instead of like d jumping on the mid journey train doubled down on stable diffusion and i was like what can be a differentiator within stable well i don't get censored and i love crazy art so let's double down on that and let's double down on deform because no one can create both no one can create deform type videos in anything besides deform it's the only thing and like caber i don't think was really out I don't know if Pika was out or not. Like, it was still in its infancy. They'll be like, "I'm gonna master this thing," and I remember just like applying to so many different open calls, and and the first deform video I put into an open call, like no brainer, it got picked for NFT New York City for a show, and like that was the big turning point. And and, and then within a week of that. I created the first Art History 101 video, and I created a video for the Peter Gabriel contest. And that Peter Gabriel contest was what kind of put everything on the map at that point. Um, got second place in that, you know, got paid $10,000 commission to sell the video to Peter Gabriel. Peter's team then reached out to do concert visuals for his North America tour. 
So I used control net um, and like hybrid video type shit for that. And like knowing that, okay, this is real. Like this is going like, you know, Peter Gabriel is always like up and coming, cutting edge supporter of technology, knowing that this is going to be a thing. And it's still like not embraced much. <laughs> like people still don't appreciate deform because they don't understand it because no one really is like utilizing it. Um, so yeah, there's yeah, people, yeah it's, it's, it's not, it's not a tool. Anybody can just pick up and you, yeah. you actually, the learning curve is a pretty steep one to learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you got to put your time in it because <laughs> it's not just like you're going to go, Hey, I'm just going to, you know, punch this and here we go. It's rolling. Nope. And that's why I have mad respect for anybody using Deform at that level suite. Um, Did you guys want to take a moment to watch Art History 101 or anything just to kind of talk about it? I have it pulled up on another tab here. I saw you guys share it. Yeah, put sure. it in. Yeah, I'll I'd also yeah, cool like video. to give a, a little <laughs> bit more context, I think, to, to our separate roles within the Underworld. So typically, um, Underworld, the, the person Underworld... Um, He's on the art visual side, and I'm on the audio technical side. Uh, more recently, we've been really intertwining our skills, but typically any static visual art you see is from his mind, and anything you hear is kind of from my mind, and then they both go through both of our creative filters uh, ultimately. I would say so that's a powerful combo you guys got there. Yeah, it's really, really a deep um, collaboration. And I think it's partly due to us having known each other for like 23 years now. Wow. That's pretty um, cool. Fourth so, grade. yeah, we, we can Fourth grade. Grade. Wow. Nice. Yeah, oh, we know nice. how to deal with each other. I think um, <laughs> we're, we're very good much. Word. Deal, with, deal yeah. with each other. Yeah. <laughs> we're very much um, on different sides of the spectrum, I think. <laughs> Underworld is very much an extrovert. I'm very much an introvert. Underworld so you guys is... balance each other out. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very I, I, like, I'm, technical. I'm more mechanical. like ADHD spectrum. Yeah. He's more like He's autism just... spectrum. And like <laughs> yeah, just exactly. match really good exactly. together. Yeah. It's a <laughs> it's a cool. unique blending of skills that is really hard to find and like this level of collaboration with the, the give and take, even though we are so um I think strong in our creative ambitions and our uh our, our tastes but we, we still can collaborate really well no that is awesome guys like i mean that's uh it's a pretty good collaboration in the pure sense when you attribute equal you know size of who you are and you balance each other out you can mm -hmm. really make powerful stuff and it shows Mm -hmm. If anybody's seen any of your work, it's shows. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, so like, and and when that that first um, show where we, I kind of had that big break. Like, I think Hacks was just starting like a, a, another business with his wife to do, you know, uh, website design shit, and like, I kind of just like, I just went a thousand miles per hour for like a couple months making just the, the regular art and, and whatnot. And like having hacks come back into the, the fold and like getting him warmed up into forum, we did the farmer Gary video. And I was like, dude, you're going to do the motion params for this. You're, I'm going to show you the ropes, but like you're going to take and like, dude, I, I was blown. I was learning shit from him by the end of it. And he was only into forum for like, you know, week, like, like yeah. deep in the weeds. And so, you know, I, I gave him my old motion parameters for the original art history 101 and the, and the prompt, which was like a 50, 50 thing long prompt. It was like 3000 character long prompt. And like, yeah, he, he just completely took that and ran with it and was able to take what I, I did at a thousand miles per hour and slow it down and like make sense of it. Um, and, and that's just like, you can't really, there's not a lot of collaborators like that in the space right now. That, no, there's, there's yeah. like solo, uh, <laughs> solo, uh, I don't know what you say the next word, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, um, uh, 
But yeah, th- so this this podcast, me and Otaku, we collaborated on it, and it was it was due to the fact that the amount of hate AI has out there. Mm-hmm. pure ignorance of what it really is like people think like you can just spit in it and it'll just do something for you <laughs> just absolutely yeah. i'm gonna play um art history on like low volume and maybe you guys can just kind of talk over it like as far as like process that you got you know just to give people kind of a better idea of like what goes into it from your perspective because i know how to Definitely. how to explain it from like a neural frames perspective but i, I don't want to hear kind of the, the side of it yeah i think I think it starts um, around 10, 11 months ago when Underworld created the original art history video um, for for a Claire Silver co- contest. Um, and then we had this uh, We Love the Art Optimism blockchain challenge come up. And we thought of repurposing this video with the latest and greatest in SDXL models also taking everything that we'd learned from just mastering deform over the last six months or so um so for this video i don't know i think we 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 touched every single settings page within deform i think i counted i think there's like 18 different pages in there uh including sub pages and literally every single setting for this video i think we could tell you what the setting was and why we chose it so you know no defaults involved i think one thing that was really um interesting to us is when the deformed discord bot came out and those results were so smooth that really got us thinking on how can we get those smooth results out of local deform um up until then i think you still see some flickering and stuff but the the discord bot really pushed us towards getting a little bit more methodical about trying out all of these different parameter combinations and all the different deform settings to really get as smooth as possible a video on our side. Yeah, and it's not just like one or two settings that, that's in there. There's literally like hundreds of different settings from, you know, your clip skip to your cadence to like all you know all these things that like you, you sit there and you go well what happens if i turn that from two to three or right, from right. three to four and you just start twisting dials and like i i think you you ended up hacks running like what 200 gigabytes worth of test mm-hmm. renders mm-hmm. wow in a, in a month <laughs> yeah because so, it's like all right what happens when i turn this up all right let me uh, let me come back yeah. and check in two hours what it, what it turned <laughs> yeah. out so quick question for you guys i could have looked this up but i knew we were gonna have this conversation so i just kind of waited uh, for this moment to bring it up but like when you're doing this i'm seeing so many styles and stuff kind of come through on this particular video you know we got like ringo and the beatles showing up here and everything when it, in neural frames we, we create models that are based on you know base models very similar to like a laura for a, a chat gpt type model um, that we can kind of customize with our own images, whatever it is, whether it's mid-journey images, real pictures of myself, like whatever. And those models are pretty diverse. They don't, you're not restrained into those images that you're using. But for the way that you guys start your process, is there any of that that goes into it, like model building before you get into the settings? That's a great question. No, we, we haven't really messed with custom models yet. We've, uh, we've tried training a few custom LoRa's. But in terms of models, we've been just using out-of-the-box models, uh, whatever is the latest and greatest on Civit. Yeah, and I've, you know, I've tested combining models and doing this and that, but um, the results always suck, <laughs> to be honest. What this, about it? This, sucks. Like, what, what exactly? Uh, the, res- the results. Like it just doesn't, like it just here. doesn't come out, it doesn't come out as good as, like, the, what we used for this video was Juggernaut uh, V7 oh. and V8. Mm. So we used SDXL with Deform. And like, whew, you like you can't touch that. Um, SDXL and Deform just hits. Um, and it's able to capture a lot of these styles um, without it like, you know. Without customizing, you know, like with, making without having specific, yeah. Without having to spend a bunch of time 
trying to train something. It just like out of the box plays really oh well. Oh my god, man! Yeah, look at that. One. I saw this one on it. This is the one that I lost my shit over. Thank you for sharing the link. I couldn't find it. On. Nice. Yeah, uh, this this was Hax's first uh, foray in the motion parameters, and he crushed it, dude. Yeah, dude. No, and I just had fun prompting as as crazy shit as possible. Mm -hmm. And Hax, it's nice. You've been listening to so far has been yours, right? Yep. What was that? I was just saying. Yeah, this one was. Playing. Yeah, and they're always created in collaboration. You know, I, I kind of drive, um, but it's it, it is still a collaboration, even though it's coming out from my computer. With like and other in terms musicians, of the... or no, sorry, just between the two of us. Oh, sorry. Okay, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a lot of us. Like this yeah. one, I think we we worked through it section by section. Before that, mm. I was running just like three thousand. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> Just like, hey, I hope this works, and then tweaking it from there. This one, we really took our time to break it down section by section, um, and have some fun with it. And like, not having the focus on the motion parameters for me allowed me to just like lock in as crazy of a prompt as possible to the parameters that he had, and being able to play with like, you know, the scenes flowing into one of them, and just like the theme that we were trying to go on of just like it was kind of a, a jab at yield farmers becoming these you know pfp animal shill fluencers back in like 2022 and like gary v and like it was just kind of a jab at all that shit and i would say that's a pretty good jab there I caught, yeah, I caught a few of that. You know, I saw you know people the building their those. cults online, uh, you know, shill fluencers pumping a PFP animal project. He cares about and isn't real art. and Something that I think get, that commentary gets overlooked in this space because a lot of people don't want to hear it. Yeah, do you so want to no, go? We, we, we want them to hear it. That's <laughs> why... Yeah, we want them to hear it. Well, I'm not super um, aware of all like the politics and like details. Yeah, talk shit. Let's get into beef. <laughs> sure, really, really quickly. I just wanted to say about the about your question regarding models. Um, I think model creation and Laura creation, textual inversion, hyper networks, they're all kind of their own art form within itself. So we could either spend our time mastering Deforum, or we could spend our time mastering how to build models. I think we'd rather let those masters continue their craft, stand on their shoulders, and let us master our craft in in the domains that matter more to us. But I so think you know it's it's a huge, huge undertaking. So props to to all of those model creators too. We couldn't do this without without them. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, all all of the stuff that all of us are kind of been up to, you know, like it, it's all from like this community collaboration type thing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, ever since, cause you guys, you know, I'm going to kind of, I don't want to make anybody feel old here, but you guys were talking about like your first Macintoshes in 95 and stuff, but that's when I was born. That's when I was born, man. Uh, I was, yeah. I was born in 92. I was yeah. on a Mac in, in 95, 96. And that was like my childhood. Like building a PC, like, setting that shit up like I, I don't know maybe it's second nature because i've been in front of a screen my entire life and not in just the way of like consuming it exactly. but like understanding it using it using it yeah with, with what your interests are right and that's what i was mm -hmm. gonna say like i grew up like not super accessing a lot of computers but it's always been forefront of my mind you know the like digimon you know the, it's always been this concept of like the interconnected world all this stuff so now to be an adult and like playing in this world and like seeing it all all these prophecies that i saw as a kid like kind of coming to life it's uh it's pretty trippy man because i knew about ai since like 2016 because i i do it professionally for like businesses you know i did it with tesla i do it with my current company i always knew ai was there for like business and doing mm -hmm. things but in this like visual world and music world and stuff i did not see this coming it's been completely freaking me out honestly Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you both, since, you know, you guys have been using Deforum for so long. So the Nikolai, uh, who built NeuroFrames from Deforum, his application of it, you, uh, I think Hax has been using it. And for me, he's a genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's insanely impressive. Just one dude building that entire thing. Um, it's 
I don't think it's getting enough recognition. I think it sort of takes all the best parts of Deforum and boils it down into a standard interface that anybody can pop open. But I also do like that there's a little bit of barrier and there's a little bit of moat between <laughs> the videos that we're doing and the videos that other people are doing. But I think that that moat is quickly being closed by everyone smashing into neural frames daily. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, dude, like, I've come to a realization that, you know, there are these, like, skill gaps that can maybe separate you from other people, whatever, and at first I was like, oh, maybe we should, like, have some trade secrets or something, but I, mm -hmm. I, I very quickly realized that you can tell the whole world every little thing yeah. that you're doing, once they see the work that you have to do, they won't do it. Uh, yeah, dude, 100%. I think that's what Underworld's been doing for, for like, a year now, just just dropping all the secrets, spilling all the sauce. Secret sauce nobody's, every week and no one, it up. no one knows what to do with it. <laughs> Yeah, because mm -hmm. they, they have to sit down and do some work. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, you know, mm -hmm. At one that's point, though, you, do. You, you might know how to drive the machine, but it doesn't mean that the directions you're going to take it are, like, pleasing yep. or aesthetically, uh, you know, uh, Well, I, I, can, I, you know, I can teach you how to fish, but I can't take you down to the river and, and, mm -hmm. and have you. You have to get behind the wheel <laughs> and drive yeah. the vehicle and, and, and learn, learn all the dials and figure it out. I think we're in that day and age, especially with these AI tools. Like, I've been I've been sitting on my soapbox preaching to you know stable diffusion for the last twelve plus months, and and all these mid journey people have come to me and go, oh, I want to make stuff like you, and I want to learn, and can you show me and teach me? And like <laughs> in the DMs, I'm like, yeah, sure. Here's here's the secret sauce. None of them have adopted, like, there's only a, a handful of people doing it. Literal handful. A, a literal handful of people actually sitting down and taking the time to learn it. And you can tell because their craft is taking off. And the other people that stuck just to mid-journey, they're not even the fucking space anymore, dude. They're not even, like, the, you know, you, you just kind of become this easy button hobbyist, which is okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's awesome that, like, AI yeah. allows you to creatively express without having, like, artistic background. But like, if if you want to be a true artist, like you gotta like, you gotta take the time with your craft. You can't you just fucking can't yeah, hit, hit the prompt anymore. button. It's it's no less intense than doing a painting or anything. You got to get down like with the videos yeah. on the frame by frame basis, making decisions, and yeah, yeah. It, it's it's no different than any other art or craft when you when you actually are putting yourself into it and driving the machine. Yeah. No, that that's true. Um... And I think people are not blind when they see good work from just work and then just, you know, pure work, just crap. But yeah, <laughs> even with AI, <laughs> I mean, I like motion AI. I, I was kind of like, I, I didn't like it in the beginning. I was like, I, I guess it was really crap at the beginning too. Cause you know, the moment you go too much out of frame, it just, I don't know what it made. I, no sense but so the motion ai and stable diffusion are two different beasts you know there's two different tracks there are you know the ai is going for the video generative so but in my opinion i think stable diffusion and deform are going to master to the point where you're literally going to be creating 32k movies straight it's going to get that clean well, I mean, we're 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 there. We're getting yeah. there. We're on the cusp. I just sent you guys in the chat here, like uh, <laughs> a little video I put together with stable video diffusion on yeah, options. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> up right now. It's a classic. <laughs> yeah, I know this thing. I know stable yeah. video diffusion. Yeah. But like, diff you also. But Taki, you want to you pull it up? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I got yeah, it here. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Well, there's we're, there's this, and then this is just the first deformed video that kind of put us on the map. Yeah, this um, is the, the object one, one is is stable video diffusion, and it's like I was able to put like a little video clip together that looks like runway ML in a matter of thirty minutes with using you know images that I prompted. And then putting the motion to them and like, you know, give it another six months, you'll have full motion control over the SVD that you do in Deforum. Right now with SVD, you, you don't have as much motion control 
over it with you know stable video diffusion but as we're learning animate diff and other comfy ui workflows like in the next six months you're going to be able to do what we're doing here with deform with like you know high quality 1080p video and it's going to look realistic and you're not you're it's you're the line between what's real and what's created with ai is going to blur very quickly this year yeah I mean, uh, i'm with you on that i mean you were saying earlier like how you like to make weird art and stuff and i i hear a lot of people like my younger brother is a, a film uh person right he went to college for like cinema editing like traditional filmmaking and um a lot of the people from that world you know of traditional filmmaking they look at stable diffusion they get kind of confused they talk about how it's not fitting like certain things that they're taught right but the way i see it all because i'm looking at the younger generation i'm looking at my my wife's younger brother i'm looking at my younger sister and all their like peers and stuff is like none of them are into the the, the right way to do it you know they're into this mm -hmm. new world wave of like transforming how stories are told and visuals are expressed because it's like let's just be fucking real hollywood and all that <laughs> stuff is super boring it's boring i never watch movies and tv shows anymore because it's so played out i mm -hmm. need to see something different right and like i know that stable diffusion can get us to that like mimic status of like oh it's just like real film but i don't even think that's to me i don't see that i don't see that as the main point behind all this stuff dude this right. stuff is like you know you're talking about how it looked like a dmt dream back in like 2013 well now it's starting to look like a dream dream man i had a dream that looked like this not that long ago yeah. i'll tell you one yeah. thing uh 420 club they're happy about ai because you know <laughs> they got enough visuals to watch all day long on youtube why yeah, do you think like... i create this shit <laughs> so when i get super high i can just kind of zone out and uh you know this is like um what were the old like Apple screensavers that you could like? Oh my god! Dude, yeah. those were fire. Yeah. Hacks and I used to get deep into that shit on on our like MacBooks in middle school, and so like yeah, this this is like that new visual that you can kind of like this is a music video, and I made it. In... <laughs> I made this in five days. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So, so, it so uh, key, key word he just said, five days. All right? Yeah. Five days. But that that's a culmination of yeah. nine mm -hmm. months of motion parameters that mm -hmm. I put together for this. Yeah. So, uh, let that sink in yeah. also, you know. That's perfecting a, a craft and, like, being able to get it. In that, you know, now when Hacks and I put our mind to something, like, yeah, we can push out a music video in a week. We could perfect it over a month. But, like, we could get into this state of, like, pushing out this content super fast. And, like, I think I think we're ready to do that. But it's the fact that there's some limitations in the NFT space that I think hold back a lot of the video creativity still. You know, it takes a lot of time to make this stuff and effort. And, like, the file sizes are pretty big. And so marketplaces right now don't support those file sizes. They're starting to, but like, you know, if I want to sell this on Foundation, which is an ETH marketplace, like they've got a file size limitation of 50 megabytes. What the fuck am I going to do with that's going to be a, that's going to be like a 12, 20 second clip. Yeah. These are five minute long videos. So, right. you know, a lot of that's holding back, I think, creativity in the AI space for this. Because if not, it just like, yeah, I can post it on YouTube and get some likes, but like, I'm trying to make some money off of this shit. So um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that I think holds back some of us, you know, from pushing it further. But I think with opportunities in, in the music space this coming year for, again, Peter Gabriel is that signal of like, it's going to get embraced in the next 12 months by the music industry and you're starting to see concert visuals at edm concerts like with ai and you're that's starting to see this slowly creep into the music world and i think that's what's going to finally give deform the platform it needs because the nft space is not the platform <laughs> for appreciating deform videos no no um, one's really appreciating it no the the what you call it the nft world because i did get look into it a little bit back in like 2020 2021 and um here i'm gonna pop up this other video while i'm talking but the uh <laughs> it looks funny i have <laughs> oh boy 
Let's see. Oh dear. <laughs> Hold on, let me turn this down a little bit. But like it, you know, it looks shit now because this is the first iteration of it. But this is stable video diffusion with comfy UI. <laughs> and if we just think of how Mid Journey progressed in six months, I think yeah. you know, Blow I think we're, we're almost thinking small if we think that in six months we're going to be on to the next version of Deforum. It's like in six months we might be in virtual reality to forum at the, oh, at the rate yeah. things are progressing real time virtual worlds um you might not be prompting into auto 1111 you might be prompting into unreal engine and you're just able to create full yeah. virtual worlds that you can interact with walk around in in so, near real time yeah so with unreal engine you can do that now without without text prompting but you can do ai parameters oh. with like numbers essentially oh. and let's say you figure out like a corner of a let's say you're in a cube if you figure out one corner of that cube with like traditional and not even coding just like knowing the settings mm -hmm. you know what i mean like a doll once you get that corner in there's recently in 5.2 or yeah 5.2 they released uh, an ai in it for free where once you get that corner figured out you expand it it takes over the whole cube and it's extrapolating based on your 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 visual prompt, right? As far oh. as text prompts go, Unity is about to drop some huge stuff called Muse, and I forgot the name of the other thing they're dropping, but that's they're kind of punching it a little bit faster. Yeah, well, Taku awesome. is also a game developer too, so an oh, aspiring dope. one. Aspiring. I haven't released anything, but I've been, you know, I've been studying that stuff for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, you know, an AI coming into that space, I knew it was going to happen. Um, I've been part of some betas, but you know, it's 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 still taking its knowing the just like music and and visuals mm -hmm. like you know being a an actual drawer and stuff like like you are like having those base skills are always going to be useful even if you start implementing ai because it's just going to calculate what you already know right so Absolutely. i don't think it was a waste like learning game development or anything because totally it's gonna help out with with all of that jazz but going backwards just a little bit because i wanted to to touch on a point that you were saying hacks about like getting embraced by the music industry and stuff the like i've been saying this i've been beating this drum for like since like before Donald Trump became president, like all these people, Hollywood, huge music productions, film scores, all that stuff has have been using AI generated stuff. <laughs> yeah. Only recently have they just been like kind of admitting to it. So now mm -hmm. it's becoming a debate, but it's like, it's not really a debate because they just did it under our nose for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, before you guys joined, I was talking about that movie that came out a few years ago that won a freaking Oscar. Um, anything everywhere all at once. Uh, have you guys seen it? Yeah. I haven't. Um, that whole movie was made with freaking runway, like literally runway. <laughs> Not joking. Really? And it looks like it looks horrible, dude. I see better shit on Twitter. Like, uh, <laughs> it was not a good movie. But you know, I was watching it and I was just like realizing all this stuff. And I was like, dude, this looks just like Runway. Um, and then so I looked up some articles and stuff, you know. And yeah, it's they won an Oscar. One of the smallest editing teams in history. One of the smallest production teams in history. They ran a lot of their stuff through through Runway. Gen one. Do, yeah, Gen yeah. one. Because it was like 2022, 21. They did that. Right, and they won an Oscar. So, so, yeah, so Jeez. imagine that. Like this, uh, this is like behind the curtains, you know. Disney, everybody. So yeah, they've been Very, using it. Yeah, they'll they'll fully be embracing it the, again. The next twelve to twenty four months are, are gonna be really crazy. Like we're we're still super early on this tech. Um, this tech's gonna speed up quickly and like you're gonna start seeing <coughs> especially with the apple uh device coming out for ar vr uh i think th this week maybe like stuff like that's starting to pop up in this space to where like things are going to change rapidly um and a lot of these companies are going to embrace the ai aspect because dude bottom line it's you're gonna it's you you save a lot more money embracing it than paying a bunch of people to do it so that's gonna be fucking it's gonna be pretty nutty to see that actually take take hold in this space um yeah. have you the big um, studios I, I, have already oh, i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead deep i'd say the big studios have already been caught out on like some of the marvel or uh, uh Netflix uh, actually uh, did a press release that they'll be using um, AI for all the animations, um, you know, shows they put on for the storyboards. So they're not going to have actual artists doing the storyboards anymore. They've been doing that, though. They see, they're just, yeah. they're yeah. just pretending like it's a shift that's happening now. Well, like, dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's such it's a... Our, yeah, it's the, the, the real shift is like, the, it's not just going to be storyboards. 
they're gonna have yeah. real people you know i i could at home set up my phone camera act out some scenes and then run that in in vid to vid mm-hmm. uh with a mask and like create a whole anime like we want to yep. do that actually you yeah. can do that with animate diff but like yeah it's it, it comes out super clean and there's people starting to learn how to do that and like the i think content anyone's going to be able to make the content now right yeah. so so now your individualistic style becomes that new medium exactly um, and, and your creativity and creative voice like if anyone can create create the content then it's going to be a bigger challenge now for a lot of these corporations to kind of keep up and you're going to see more personalized content being created by content creators yep, and that that's why is companies are yeah going after that, it on the news and stuff you know well that is the single most important thing he just said and i wanted to drive that to the viewers that just like YouTube, when it you know it gave people their own channel, to put their <laughs> content out. Now the AI is giving you the tool to produce that level content, which the corporations and Hollywood and whatnot was producing. Because among the human beings, there are creators. Not not all of them are good, but somebody's going to have a unique flavor to come out. I would love to see some more sci-fi stuff that makes sense than waiting on goddamn years for sequels mm-hmm. and they ruin and billions of dollars millions of dollars making just crappy sequels and stuff like that yeah. zach uh snyder's rebel moon it it was i almost thought like it was like an ai movie it is it was so out of place it was so out of place a lot of the movies have been really bad recently because yeah. people, they're using the ai tools they're not really saying it and you know they don't really know what they're doing because they're not taking the people who are like in it they're trying to keep it within that hollywood like spectrum right mm-hmm. yeah well they're but also again, doing it oh, okay Sorry. go ahead deep. go ahead deep they're doing everything by committee right with you could put out all the content you want but if it's not compelling it doesn't have a narrative or storyline something that grabs you you it's it's just content and that's all we're getting from a lot of these netflix amazon and the big studios is just content with the committee's opinion as opposed to individuals who are saying this is my story this is my stance and this is what i'm putting out you can make everything in the world, but if it's all just a jumbled nonsense, people aren't going to be engaged enough to even, you know, uh, mm. interact with it. So you, you, it, the, that human element is still required. AIs can't tell stories. They can't write lyrics. They can write lyrics, but it's the same over and over. If you generate enough, you see the patterns. It's mm. just not uh, – You. it takes that person to make it more than content, to make it art or, uh, you know, something – engage meaningful yeah exactly well the yeah because the audience is still going to be humans and you know, the ai is going to be your audience you still have to make something that people enjoy i mean that's the key right there and you guys you're the flow of your videos you know there's there's a narrative there there's a story it's it's engaging you know uh that like the farmer gary thing uh I remember the first time it was like, Jesus, oh my God. And it just kept going. And then they're in the pool and then these mountains like, oh man, how do they decide this stuff? But how much of it is like an accident on that kind of stuff? Like where you're like, oh, look what happened. You're doing the certain things for that one shot take, right? You're trying to just do everything in one shot. Totally. Like you can, you can prompt, you can prompt an image all you want. As soon as you put that prompt into forum, you don't know what you're going to get. So I took a lot of my old, um, that one, that first image you pulled up on on our Twitter was uh, AI art cult, which was like the really like crazy shit that I put on object for the first time. And like, I've I've been reworking that prompt into everything. Like it's just it's insane. And you, you know, I always when I show it, I'm like, can your AI do this? Because most of the time, no, no, you can't do that with Mid Journey, and you can't do that with Runway. You're right. gonna get your shit turned off because they're gonna block it <laughs> so like it's it's kind of like a middle finger to a lot of those corporations trying to censor art as well we're gonna start seeing a lot more censorship within art so like open source is gonna be the only way to go in the future it's gonna be the only way that creatives can actually creatively express themselves without being censored and put into that corporate fold of you have to say this or do that or show this yeah so yeah, I'm I'm very like strong on it has to be stable diffusion. I I call myself a stable diffusion purist mm-hmm. because I'm I like I understand I, I've I've read enough dystopian literature 
to like know where it leads right like yeah. this is the the early stages of standing up for that non-censorship shit because if you don't then the people that bend the knee to that shit and 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 yeah that's yeah. no bueno you're like well uh, you know in this day and age this art form has its own rebellion too so you know you have to express it yeah yeah you're like uh you're like martin luther hitting that that paper on the door <laughs> right because like this type of thing that we're talking about right like yeah it's it's an <laughs> conversation but i'm also a bit of a history buff and this type of thing happens all the time in human history right when books yeah. like the concept of books being prolifer pro proliferated without it being part of a church was like a humongous deal people thought the world mm -hmm. was gonna fucking end dude. they're like anybody can put something down it because at the time books were powerful a book was the bible that's it and it stopped making sense to these people, like Martin Luther. You know, they're like, none of this makes sense anymore. But I don't have access to anything else because it's all censored. When books and everything started getting released, the world changed, right? And then once we went from books to audio, the world changed. Once we went from audio to visual, the world changed. Like, all of that does is make the world bigger, make the world more connected. And you know, there's always a pushback on it, but it never. I, I think it's impossible for it to succeed, especially at, the, at this point in history that we're in. I don't think they can ever truly like they they can do stuff. They can target like an individual, but like as the whole. They can't really censor it anymore. I'm going to drive this uh, thing in a real passive way, not really going into the World Economic Forum. But one thing I, you know, listened to what was going on and the <laughs> interesting comments made there. It seems like they realized that the people ha are getting more powerful because of the connectivity. And now they're scared. We wait. And that, that is a fact. Yeah. How, how, do we can, how do we keep people more divided? So... I don't know. AI is going to be interesting too, as, as we have this upcoming election. We've got a lot of other things going on. Like, you think about where deep fakes were, you know, a year ago to where they'll be this year when it oh comes to God, political yeah. attacks, etc. Like, it, it's we're in that day and age that's probably been warned warned about in some scripture somewhere about yeah. you not being able to believe or believe anything you see or hear. Right, yeah. like it's gonna be very hard to decipher what's real oh, yeah. and what's not in in the coming year. In pure terms of chaos, yep. <laughs> so how much of that will be utilized well. to, you know, um, control or push a mainstream narrative, or continue to like you know, propagandize and and make people believe in in one thing or another? Yeah, well. Not, again, not to get too off topic, but I mean, uh, the way I see all this, man, is just like, that's always been the case. That's always, that's human history, brother, because the Pulitzer Prize, for example, right? The big journalist award was named after a journalist who, in in elementary school, we learned about that uh, that concept called yellow journalism. Today, we call it uh, fake news, right? Uh, <laughs> so Pulitzer was a yellow journalist known for making shit up, basically. He wrote heavily during the American-Spanish War when Cuba was separated from Spain. He wrote all that, got a lot of awards. We all know he was a freaking liar. <laughs> and the award for true journalism is named after that guy, right? Today, in 2024. Brutal. So, there, yeah, AI or not... after a dynamite inventor, right? Look at some of yeah. the people they've given the Nobel Peace Prize to. Yeah, well, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> AI, hey, AI or no AI? Yeah. AI or no AI, you know, they're always going to be lying. They're always going to be yeah, freaking. So. so I don't even care. Honestly, the AI just makes it at least they, at least they're going to lie to us in a cooler way than ever before. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited for that. I mean, you know, the moon landing thing was sick, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. Just imagine oh, the God, tech guy on the next one. <laughs> Dude, they're going to be great. Some yeah, logic blue awesome. beam. <laughs> I think it's interesting also because we're, we're all in the art space, the AI art space. We're watching these developments come out near daily, you know, face mm -hmm. reactor, IP adapter. There's all these lip syncing tools. Um, we're, you know, again, we're all in the art space. All of our peers are trying to use these tools in artistic ways. We haven't necessarily seen people really sitting down and trying to use them in malicious ways, um, at That's least true. in the art space. But if someone is, you know, really determined, you sit three people down in a single day, you can make a very convincing video on which, whichever side of propaganda you want. Sure. Um, and and you put that on TikTok and really a bunch dangerous. of uh, kids will watch it and have mm -hmm. real or not and, and, and have a political sway 
happen to this or that. And at this point, I, Maybe I feel for the like, rest you know, of their lives. all of I'm us sorry. in this room know intimately how relatively easy that's starting to become to do. Um, but really, we exit this virtual room we're in. We go talk to the person at the gas station. They have they have no fucking clue. They don't know what Chad GPT is. What you know? What stage of AI we're at? So it's gonna You're be right. it's, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, the sitting in this space and thinking about that people are aware of this tag and everything was going on. You walk outside, go to the grocery store, or the yeah. gas station. You realize no, it's not out there like that mm -hmm. yet because there's. There are people who are still dealing with day-to-day, -day, you know, things. They don't even have time mm -hmm. to even go and look into this. So yeah, it's a yeah, that it's a perspective on its own. You know, like we are kind of closed in, and then we go out, we see two different things. Yeah, well, I mean, it's an awareness thing, right? And that's why the companies are like major news sites, like BBC or something, will always be crapping on AI. People will see that, know to stay away from it. They'll never look into themselves because <laughs> they're too busy. Then when the fake stuff starts coming out and everything, they're going to be the most susceptible to being tricked. I mean, one of the main reasons I started my channel um, wasn't necessarily like for profit or anything because I don't do NFTs or anything. I just put it out there uh, mainly to kind of like share my music, maybe get some Spotify streams or something. But uh, another nice. side of it really is just to say like, hey, guys, look how I'm doing this. Like, it's kind of like, look what this is. You know, I like, I have all these explanations in my descriptions. Um, I have a video coming out soon. That's like a little bit behind the scenes stuff. Like just to just get people, like, you don't have to be a computer whiz. You don't have to like, just do it, do it for fun. Um, do it if you're young in school. Like if you have a, if you have a project to do for your history class, use this thing, like speaking, um, hacks and underworld to, uh, closing comments because so the reason for the podcast and this space between me and Otaku created was to bring awareness of the AI artists and how they're using AI in creative ways. So whichever one you want to go first, kind of give your, I mean, we, you all gone through the journey you took to get where you're at. We all, you know, heard that just what would be the last things you want to kind of give out there for the haters or the lovers uh, for the hate i mean i i thrive in a place of hate oh yeah <laughs> it's it's like uh um uh, uh, it's a very comfortable place for me and i'm mm -hmm. i'm actually surprised i don't i don't receive a lot of hate mm -hmm. in in this ai space maybe because maybe not a lot of people know it but like with that peter gabriel video like that was the first big exposure for that and seeing like i think it's up to like a thousand comments maybe 90 something percent of them are all positive comments mm -hmm. that's awesome, you know man. and that's that's really sick to see is like wow okay people people do in, embrace this craft it's going to be accepted more and more as we continue to move on we're again we're so early stages on that that adoption bell curve that like you know, we're going to start seeing it become more mainstream this year. And as we do, per perfecting your craft is most important. Last year was all about exploring stuff, creating, mm. getting the know and familiarizing with the tools. This year, it's doubling down on your craft and exponentially growing in whatever it is that you think is best to create it with. And for us, it's always going to be stable diffusion. It's always going to be deform. Right now, it's animate diff. You're gonna see some crazy shit from us this year. So nice. Sweet. Your eyes Looking peeled. forward to it. Yeah. Hacks. I think really interesting question on on responding to hate. Um I think in the past, Underworld and I have had some, you know, kind of <laughs> knee jerk responses when somebody says something rude or um aggressive or out of line. Um and I think what we're finding is that there is some really interesting conversations to be had around mm -hmm. this. And when somebody attacks you, it's an opening for a potentially really interesting conversation to educate them true. about the process, how difficult this was to create, how this was much more than just typing words into a box and pressing the generate button. Um, I think it also opens a conversation to, you know, 
why are you resistant to this tool? Could you potentially incorporate these tools into your own creative process? Um, do you have a creative process that could be enabled with these tools? So there's, yeah, I think there's some really interesting aspects around that. In terms of the future, I think we're just really excited on the state of the tools currently. Um, things are feeling, starting to feel pretty mature. You're getting really smooth animations. Like things are starting to feel, uh, I guess, production ready, you know, ready for big screens, ready for prime time, ready for the main stage at concerts. Um, and I think we're, we're trying to move in all of those directions all at the same time. Uh, I think one of our challenges is just that there aren't enough hours in the day for everything we want to do. Yeah. We're trying to do massive upscales. We're trying to do SVD. We're trying to do animate diff. You know, we're trying to do eight different GPU intensive things on a single day. We have a single computer each. Um, I think time is the biggest constraint at this point. And then also Unreal Engine moving into virtual worlds. There's just so many things on the horizon for us that we're uh, Ga like really gaming, about. dude. We know that yeah. gaming is going to be a realistic thing, you know, in the in the coming years. And it's like, uh, we're both huge gamers. We grew up yeah. gaming. I still game all uh, every day. Like that, that's going to be something to continue to explore. VR, AR. I think I think VR, AR is definitely going to be a kick kickoff point this year. Gaming mm -hmm. still a ways down the road. Like we had image generators come out two summers ago it took a whole 12 13 months for music tools to even come out after that right and they're still like in their infancy so you're mm. gonna start to see all these industries get disrupted by the mm. tools but it's like the more difficult like music is a lot more difficult to make with ai really well than it is to generate an image mm -hmm. the image is the starting point then the music then then the video then than the gaming and the gaming experience because i think gaming is like the highest form of art it, it is the exactly, full experience yeah, yeah. it's almost I reductive agree. to call it just gaming it's it's almost just immersing experience yeah and i think it's a full think, immersive experience gaming yeah, is a the, disservice have you guys yeah, the words might move in that direction yeah have has you, any of you uh seen star citizen yes i yeah didn't i didn't pick it up you know, just to the point, because, you know, when you're talking about immersion, like it's being what they've created is, is just insane. Mm -hmm. um, and when you got two heads on it collaborating, like it, it really changes the dynamic. Um, you get a lot more happy accidents when you got two people rendering the same thing um, and, and, and sharing prompts and sharing motion, like all of that. I think that's, you know, we're going to double down on that this year for sure. Um, yeah. But like the process is, it's all creative intuition. Mm -hmm. um, and the more it's like a muscle, dude, creativity is a muscle. You just got to mm -hmm. put more and more reps in. Mm -hmm. So we got a bunch of songs. We probably need to make music videos. Too. Yeah. We've it just whole, comes down to time. Bunch. Yeah. yeah. No, I know. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I have a lot of songs that have been pending uh, completion because of the video aspect. Uh, but yeah, no, thanks. Deep, but... you got anything you want to ask before? Uh, uh, I kind of when you're talking about creating all this stuff, I mean, it, at some point, because of the time involved and all that, is there, I mean, when do you give yourself permission to just be like, I'm just going to make a, a trippy video, let it go, not kind of like rely on the math and the algorithms, but just taking the chances, just throw the v music in there and let it react with some just, you know, you, you already have an idea how operations work on the motion and stuff. So just, you know, uh what would they call that shotgun and you know throwing in your things yeah i mean see i, I kind of i i i'd enjoy sitting here watching it frame by frame but i would i also enjoy like coming back and saying holy shit look what it did with you know giving it some extremes to bounce off of um i mean would you because you got all that music you know what about doing that doing just some blurt it out like Buckethead, bump out a, an album in a week you know uh I think that's where some of our explorations start. Um, but then through the process, I think we're both very much perfectionists when it comes to our craft. Um, we like anything you see either of us put out, we've, we've really meticulously spent time on it. It's very rare that 
you'll see something from us that just goes straight out the door um, in a matter of minutes. So I think we, we start our process at the stage you said, shotgunning, just vibing, having fun, no yeah. real goal in sight. I think that's I think that's been some of our best work has come out of that style of process. But then it ultimately gets filtered and goes through some refining before Shifted it into business of, mode. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. <clears throat> I love well, you guys. guys <laughs> <laughs> He's so excited he'll jump out of team. No, me too, man. I love you guys. And thank you for giving us the time to, you know, yeah, share yeah. your experiences. Because I think it's really important that these sessions go out to the people who are trying to get in or trying to understand what goes behind, you know, most of the stuff. So thanks a lot for uh, coming on the podcast. And we're going to get this rolled out real fast. So, you know, people yeah, can check dude. it out. Definitely a pleasure to be on here. Space, mm -hmm. dude, next time we need to get you a hat, bro. You're the only one up here without a hat oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> we, 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 gotta, we need we to get you right. up in a in a hat, yeah. but we're we're happy to jump back in here anytime with you guys. Just send the invite. We'll make it happen for sure. Yeah, right. no, we gotta do this again for sure. We're gonna have Yeah, uh, yeah this is awesome. Know, with all the updates coming out this year, we'll definitely have some more stuff to do. Totally. Remember. Every couple months there's definitely an, a bunch of new stuff to talk about. So mm -hmm. we're yeah. we're happy to come back on. This was a great time. Sounds good, man. You guys take care, man. Yeah, can't see, you guys, you too. Can see what you guys do next.